Welcome back to AZ Astro. So today I've got an unboxing video. I got in a new filter wheel about a week and a half ago. I've been pretty busy lately so I haven't been able to make any videos but I'm going to do the unboxing tonight. I already got my telescope all set up so I'll be doing some imaging tonight and then later on in the week I'll have another video. I haven't chose my target just yet but I'll have another video with the new filter wheel uh, taking images. So let's get to the unboxing. All right, so this is what I replaced. The whole... This is what I replaced. This was the Orion Nautilus 7.125, I believe it is. So this is what I'm replacing. Let me get you focused. There we go. This is what I'm replacing. It actually broke, as you can see right there. The uh, plug just broke out and it it was just a pain in the butt to use I had to constantly unplug it plug it back in just to use it so it's a good thing I'm replacing it so I'm replacing it with this right here so I did start to open it and then I remembered I had to do an unboxing so I stopped at just opening this box so and I bought this from High Point Scientific and it's actually a kind of a funny story so just packaging paper with my address on it that you guys don't need to know. So when I had ordered this, I actually ordered this about two months ago. And what had happened was I had ordered the QHY uh, 33 millimeter seven position slim filter wheel. Well, I didn't realize at the time that I actually have 1.25 inch filters and that my filter that one of my filters is 10 10 millimeters in size so it wasn't going to fit in the slim so i ended up i was able to call them up and tell them hey i need a different one so they sent me this one but i'll flip it around this way so we can all actually see it so the box nothing else left in there you know, I got to hand it to QHY. They do do a really good job in packaging, and it's fairly heavy. All right, there we go. Put that down there. So I have not opened this yet. I'm definitely going to keep the box. So same thing for the drivers. It's just a paper telling you where you can download the drivers. And then looks like a sticker. Okay, so we have a cord right here, which is good because I need to replace my cord anyway. And it looks like it's probably one of the six foot cords, most likely five, six foot cords. And then this, so I've never actually used one of these. I don't even know what it's called, but it's, I assume, or I believe it's to hook up your filter wheel to your camera. So you don't have to hook it straight up to the computer. You can just hook it up to the camera. I don't hook it up that way. I've got all the hookups for my computer. So I'm not worried about that cable. And then, I think this one is the same thing. I'm not going to open that. And then this random, or not random, but screws. I'll have to figure out what those are for later. And then this looks like a two inch adapter with a bunch of screws and what looks like washers. Yeah, so this is little small screws and then this looks like a bag full of washers yeah oh okay I'm not uh, let's see M M2 times 3 not quite sure what these are for just yet this is the first time I've ever uh, had an actual filter wheel brand new so I'm sure I'll figure those out here in just a minute. 
I think they might be for filters that have to be mounted to the actual filter wheel, would be my guess. So let's take all these out. And here is the actual, assuming I can get it out, and here's the actual filter wheel. So it's about the same thickness as my other one, significantly smaller. So yeah, it's about the th same thickness. There's just a slight little bump on this one. So I like that. So, so okay, so here's where you can hook it up to the computer, and that is the, I call them phone cables, I don't know what the technical term for them is. So, let's break out a screwdriver. <coughs> See if this will work on these tiny screws. Nope, too big. All right, sorry about that. I had to find my screwdriver. So, got a screwdriver and it simply opens. These little screws, let me get something to put them in. Not that I can really find anything to put them in. Well, I can just put them there. That'll hold them in place. So I'm also noticing that there's screw holes along here. I believe they're screw holes. So I think that this filter wheel might be designed to attach directly to the camera. I am not 100% sure about that, but I think it might be designed that way. If that's the case, that would actually be a bonus for me that would be really really good because this filter wheel one of the big problems that I had with my Nautilus filter wheel was I uh, I was constantly stripping the threads on the camera itself so the 48 millimeter adapter that threads into the field flattener I would strip the threads on that because I'm a bit of a brute when it comes to that stuff. So if I can actually attach this to my camera to where I don't have to screw it on and off anymore, that would be a huge bonus. So, and there it is open. So yeah, those little tiny screws I believe are used to hold in filters that aren't threaded. And I do believe, yeah, there are threads. So my filters will thread in there. Uh, I do need to clean all my filters. They've been sitting on my desk for quite some time. So it looks like the motor is in the housing right here that spins the filter wheel. And then you've got this, which I assume is a laser. And when it goes over these little tiny holes right here, when it aligns with the little tiny hole, then the laser is able to pass all the way through to a receiver that's on the other end and that tells it that it's changed the filter. Now I assume it just does natural counting. It just counts one to seven to, to realize which filters it's on. But yeah that's basically how it works. It's pretty simple. I've been using it for decades. <clears throat> so uh, let me clean up my filters a little bit and then I'll install them in the filter wheel. All right I've got all my filter wheels clean and I got them sitting right here. So one thing I did notice, so this is my QHY 163M, and these are the four screws that hold this piece in place. I know there's no screws underneath, so one of the problems, and I do believe because the holes go all the way through, so I do think this is designed to attach a camera directly to it, but I think it's designed to attach a much bigger camera like a QHY 9, QHY 10. So when you put it on here and you line it up, as you can see, the holes are significantly larger than where the holes are on the camera. So unfortunately, I'm still going to have to thread an adapter in here and attach it via adapter. That's fine. That's the way that I've been doing it. I'll just be more careful with this adapter piece because this is where I am constantly stripping it. So I'll just be more careful with that. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put that camera down there and I'm gonna put this case down there. So this is the filter wheel and we've got position one right here. So typically when I do my imaging, I mostly do uh, narrow band. So I always make hydrogen alpha my first filter. So I do believe, so this is the O3 filter. This one is the sulfur 2 filter. So this one should be the hydrogen alpha filter. Yep, so this is the 12 nanometer hydrogen alpha filter. So this one goes in first and it just screws right into place. And then next would be the oxygen 3 filter, which is this one, oxygen 3. And that will go into position 2. Let's, oh, that's not good. So the filter seems to hit the metal. So I think I need to back it out slightly. Okay, so, well, that's a little annoying. So that means that the filter is going to be loose in there because the threads are so long on these filters that when I screw it in completely and I have it nice and tight, then it doesn't want to move. But that's okay, I can do it a little bit loose so it will actually move. backing on just like that it doesn't look like they're hitting and then we can put all the screws back in and then tighten that one snug them all down they don't need to be ridiculously tight that's how you strip it and this does feel like it's aluminum so aluminum is very easy to strip. So you just need to snug them. And that's it. So there's my filter wheel completely assembled with all the filters. Basically what this does, let me put that there, is you can put your camera in there like that. And then you can tighten these up just a little bit. Not too much. And then while it's on there, it's not going to, oh, that's too tight. While it's on there, it's not going to fall off. It's not going to come off. But what it does allow you to do is when you need to, when, when the mount doesn't ready and flip, you can come out and you can manually spin the camera like this so that the sensor is in the right position. And then when you're done, you just simply screw that screw on and it's nice and tight. It's not going to spin, not going to go up and down. So I really, really like that filter. It's going to save the threads on my camera as well. Because like I said before, I'm a bit of a brute. <laughs> so I really, really like that. So I don't need that on there. 
right there. Well, actually, I'm going to leave it on there. So this was the QHY CF3S-SR. So we'll see how it goes, see how it works with uh, Nina. And I will use it with StellarMate as well. I'm going to give StellarMate another try here pretty soon. See if uh, the bugs are fixed to keep it from crashing. So that is my new filter wheel. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys later on this week when I do an actual imaging video, and I'll be using the filter wheel. So I'll see you guys later.